again to another program of Issues in the News, where we discuss the important events that have taken place in our country over the last week or so. And as is the norm, I want to welcome our viewers who are joining us on television in West Coast Barbies, East Barbies, Quarantine, New Amsterdam, Blairmont, and the entire Region 5. I also want to take this opportunity to welcome our listeners and viewers who are joining us on Freedom Radio from Rob Street, Georgetown. And last but not least, I want to welcome all of our friends and followers who are joining us on Facebook right across Guyana, the Caribbean, North America, Europe, and even further afield. Welcome once again to another program of Issues in the News. And please, before we get into the discussion, please take this opportunity to share and to inform your friends that Issues in the News is on. Share the link, share the Facebook page, so that we can have as many people as possible with us as we begin to the, tonight's discussion. Permit me firstly to apologize for not being on the program for the past two weeks. We had, I believe, flag raising ceremony last week and the week before we had some technical difficulties that prevented me, to, prevented me from completing the program. But here we are and hopefully we will have a full program and a very, very uh, packed program as well. I want to begin by acknowledging and recognizing that the PPP commissioners or the government commissioners at GCOM have laid before the commission the long anticipated motions seeking the removal of Chief Elections Officer Keith Lowenfield, Deputy Chief Elections Officer uh, Roxanne Myers, as well as uh, Returning Officer for District Number 4, uh, Mortimer Mingo, Claremont Mingo, sorry. This, these motions were long anticipated. We had promised that we would have laid them but everything takes time and sometimes we get impatient and we always appeal for persons to be patient. Everything will be done at the required time. Nothing is done before it's time. So we had to wait until the investigations were concluded by the police. We had to also await until the charges were filed. We also had to wait until the statements of poll were in our possession, the official statements of poll, or rather the GCOM statements of poll. Were, we had to secure those and then move with the motion. So we have accomplished all these tasks and now the motions have been laid. But let me make it clear that in any other society, in any normal society, we did not have or a motion or motions ought not to have been required to be laid for the dismissal of these three miscreants. The world saw what they did. We all saw what they did. Courts ruled, ruled condemning what they did and declaring what they did as illegal and unlawful. In those circumstances, they ought to have been dismissed without cause instantaneously upon the declaration of the election results. But Guyana is not a normal place. And GCOM is not a normal institution. You have currently three commissioners on that commission who support Lowenfield, Myers and Mingo. They aided and abetted these three public officers as they attempted to commit fraud and rig the Guyana elections and perpetrate fraud against the voters 
and the electorate of this country. Three commissioners are there who support these, these, this type of conduct and who support those who executed the type of conduct that I am speaking about. Vincent Alexander, Desmond Trotman, and Charles Corbyn are three commissioners of GCOM. And they have seen nothing wrong. They have seen nothing wrong with what Mingo has done, with what Lowenfield has done, and with what Myers has done. In fact, they feel that the PPP rigged the elections. They feel, and they have said so, that the elections were rigged by the PPP. So you're dealing with abnormal people, you're dealing with abnormal circumstances. And therefore, you have to tread cautiously and what would ordinarily be courses of conduct that are matter of course, or that would be matter of course type of conduct in most society in Guyana, it's different. So here it is that a motion had to be laid or three motions for that matter, had to have been laid, directed to each of these miscreants, seeking to remove them from office for what they have done. The chairperson of the commission indicated that she will give to each of them 14 days to respond to the allegations contained in the motion, and then a date will be fixed, I suppose, for the debate and the motion. I don't understand how GCOM operates in this way. In my view, a vote should be taken immediately and these people should be dismissed. And the vote should be unanimous. Unanimity is what would have prevailed in the ordinary course of things. Look at Lowenfield's last conduct. The very last thing that he did up to last week or, or last month was to attempt to block the prosecution from getting copies of the statements of poll that were ordered by the Chief Justice to be in the custody of the registrar. Up to last month, he was there with his wickedness and you have... We have to follow all this process to remove a miscreant of this pedigree from office. But that is Guyana, and this is Guyana. So we have to follow the, what obtains as norm in Guyana. And we are doing that. We will persevere to the end. And I've always said that once you have the PNC around, once you have the PNC around, that is how Guyana is going to be because that is all that they know. All that they know about elections is to rig them. They cannot, they have never won a fair election ever. Every single election that they have participated in and lost, um, they have lost and they have stolen the ballots in all the cases where they have won. So that is all that they know. And I'll speak about that later. So that is where we are with the GCOM motions. And finally, I am sure that many people are breathing a sigh of relief because we have made it clear that we will not go to another election unless and until these three persons, at a minimum, are removed from the electoral machinery. As we are on the issue of GCOM, I also want to take this opportunity to give you a status update on where we are with the statements of poll. As you are aware, the Chief Justice last week ordered that the statements of poll be handed by the registrar or copies of the statements of poll in the custody of the registrar be handed to the DPP and the Commissioner of Police to be used in the Magistrates Court to prosecute 
the charges filed against several persons in relation to the elections. Lowenfield, of course, through his lawyer, uh, Nigel Hughes, attempted to intervene with a view of uh, getting the court to block the statements of poll from being disseminated. Of course, they failed, and the judge ordered that copies of the statements of poll must be made by the registrar and given to the DPP and the Commission of Police. Well, we have begun that process, and we have already completed regions four, regions three, regions, region two, region one, and region five. So we have finished five regions, four, three, two, one, and five. We have finished all the statements of poll. When I say finish, I mean they were photocopied by the registrar, certified, and handed over to a delegation representing the DPP and the Commission of Police. This delegation consists of lawyers, a lawyer, a two senior police ranks, an accountant, and another a uh, person trained in the area of statistics. The statements of poll have not yet been fully examined, but from all indications, they seem to be the authentic statements of poll. So they are kept, they are being kept at a safe place, the, the location of which I will obviously not disclose, and it, they are on the protection of the state, and the process will resume on Thursday. The registrar has some duties to which she is required to attend uh, today and tomorrow. Uh, so that exercise was put on hold for those these two days and it will resume Thursday. And hopefully by Friday it should be completed. The entire process should be completed and the police and the DPP should have in their possession, at the end of this process, all the statements of poll that GCOM had, and those statements of poll would have been certified by the registrar as copies of that which is kept, or which are kept by the registrar. The entire process also was videotaped and is being videotaped. So it is being recorded. So we have to do all of these, take all the necessary precautions to ensure that no wickedness is played out in the end. So I want to give you an update. I thought I would give you an update on that. Again, as we are on the GCOM electoral reforms, I want to also update you and to inform you that that process has begun. Um, the drafting um, has begun already. A unit within the Attorney General's chambers is working hard at getting this task completed. The issues have been identified and, and um, the sections of the law that are to be impacted or affected by the reforms have been identified and the process now has begun where the drafting of the proposed amendments are being done as well as new regulations where possible are being made. As I want to assure, and I, I have always done, done it, is to inform you that these reforms are not intended to create any electoral advantage in favor of any political party. They are all intended to tighten our legal process to tighten the laws as well as to rectify all the deficiencies we have seen exploited by the likes of Mingo and Lowenfield at the last elections. So that in future elections we will not have, we ought not to have such reoccurrence. So all the lacunas, all the gaps all the ambiguities, all the areas that were cause for concern or, or cast doubts 
in people's minds. We are going to clarify all of that in the law. So the law should be very clear. But I want to make it very clear as well that we can have the best laws and the best regulatory framework. But if you have thieves and bandits working in the system, no matter what you do, they will defy it, they will violate it, and they will breach it if they want to rig and they want to commit fraud. And we saw the, the law is not unclear. Mingo knew. Mingo has been a returning officer for three elections. He knows that he must use the statements of poll as the basis of the tabulation. Yet he refused to do that. Law and Field knows what that the report that he is to prepare must reflect the votes cast in the ballot boxes. And he can't simply prepare a report of his own. Lowenfield knows that. Lowenfield was chief elections officer in 2015. And he did the right thing. Or at least I think that he did the right thing. So it's not that they don't know. They deliberately, deliberately did the wickedness that we saw them do. So the point I am making is that we can have the best laws in place. But if we have bandits and thieves in the system, then the best law will not work. It means, therefore, that an important component of the reform must be the hiring process by GCOM. That must also be the subject of reform. The vetting process by GCOM. How do you get a job at GCOM? You know, what qualifications one must have? And what is the quality control mechanism that one must have in hiring? And who should be hiring? So these are all questions that we will have to work out. And these things do not happen in other countries because you don't have a political party who is on the sideline waiting to thief. That is what we have in Guyana. We have a PNC, APNU, AFC, whatever name you want to call them. They are simply waiting there to attempt to rob and to steal the next elections. So that is Guyana's peculiar problem. The problems that we have are not, are not uh, happening in other countries. But we have the PNC to deal with. And that is why I am saying that this PNC, we have to ensure that it is dismantled. It represents wickedness and evil. And that is all that it has done. The elections petition, as you know, there is an appeal pending against one. And the hearing of that, well, the, an application was filed to strike out the appeal. The appeal is filed by AP and UAFC after they lost. So we have filed an application to strike out on the ground that the Court of Appeal has no jurisdiction. And the Court of Appeal has no jurisdiction. That's our position. So submissions have been completed. And I believe June the 6th, 16th, I believe, June the 16th is the date that the Court of Appeal has fixed for the hearing of that uh, appeal. So we will have a lot of fun there as well. I have just completed my last set of submissions today. Um, I think they were well done, if I may say so myself. And they will be submitted to the court tomorrow morning and will be served on all the other parties. So we are prepared to present our arguments on the 16th of June when the appeal hearing will come up at the Guyana Court of Appeal. The other issue making the big news is Mr. Paul Slow and the Police Service Commission. Now, we have to understand what the Police Service Commission really is. The Police Service Commission, like the Public Service Commission, and the Judicial Service Commission 
and the Teaching Service Commission are independent constitutional bodies. They stand in the same circumstance and position like the judiciary. They are independent. They must not show political bias and prejudices. They must not act in a manner that is partial or perceived to be partial. They must not take positions that seem to be political. They must always act independently and appear to be independent. Remember, fairness is not something that must be done alone, but it must appear to be done. That is what justice is about. The perception is as important as the actuality. And these are the principles that guide the police service commissions and commissions of that type. Those who constitute these commissions, therefore, must be fair, they must appear to be fair, they must appear to be impartial, they must appear to be independent. That is the constitution. Uh, that's the constitutional requirement. And the constitution says that no politician or any authority can attempt to influence these bodies when they are discharging their functions or in, for any matter whatsoever. That is the constitutional position with these commissions. Now, I have no problem if a man or a woman wants to be a politician. I have chosen politics as a path. Now, I could have been a judge, perhaps I could have been Chief Justice, or I could have been in the Court of Appeal by now, but I choose politics. I could have, I suppose, gone and be a judge and pretend to be independent, but I didn't do that, because that's wrong. That's treacherous. When you want to be a politician, you must be a politician. Nothing is wrong with that. I believe that politics is a noble thing. I believe that politics, once done properly, is a religious thing. I believe so. And I'm speaking about politicians who are in it to help people, to improve the lives of people, to improve the lot of people, to improve their country and their society. Those from that perspective, politics is a noble profession. It's a noble endeavor. So nothing is wrong with politics. So if you want to be a politician, then you have to go and you have to join a political party and do your politics and be public about it. But you can't want to be a politician and then moonlight and masquerade as the holder of a constitutional independent office. You can't do so. It's hypocritical, it's treacherous, it's duplicitous, and it is illegal. So Mr. Paul Slow and the rest of the Police Service Commission have decided, as soon as the PPP got into government, to join a case filed by Ganesh Mahipal of APNU AFC to sue the government of Guyana and Mahipal is represented by Roysdale Ford, Rafael Trotman, Kemraj Ramjetan, Amanda Desir and Geeta Chandan. All are members of parliament for APNU and they have filed a political case against the government challenging the 2020 budget. Paul Slow and the commission have joined Mahipal in filing an action against the government 
and are being represented by all the lawyers on the opposite side in the parliament. This is a political case. Paul Slow and the commission joins APNU. How? How can anyone after that view Paul Slow and the police commission Police Service Commission as impartial. How? They have taken a partisan position. And this is not now I am saying so. I have said so from the moment that the case was filed. And when I saw that the Public Service Commission, the Police Service Commission, and the Teaching Service Commission have joined Mahi Paul, then you see clearly that they are all politically contaminated and they all should be removed from office. They should not be functioning as independent constitutional office holders. They are not. They are politicians in disguise. And the position, the posture that they have taken in joining in this political litigation has put them in contravention and violation of their constitutional obligations of impartiality and independence. And that is what these guys have done. In addition to that, Paul Slow and another member of the commission did not see anything wrong in taking a contract from the Guyana police force. Now, Pause a little to understand the role and function of the Police Service Commissioner. Po Police Service Commission. The role and function of the Police Service Commission is to exercise disciplinary control and promotion over members of the Guyana Police Force from inspector to assistant commis deputy commissioner of police. The whole top brass of the police force, this agency has disciplinary control over. How can they then, in that circumstance, take millions of dollars in contracts from the very hierarchy of the police force over which they have to exercise disciplinary control and cannot recognize that they are doing something wrong, that there is a conflict of interest, that it puts them in violation of the oath of office that they took. You cannot be exercising disciplinary control over an agency and receiving monetary rewards from that agency, How is, at, at what level is that not wrong? And that is what Paul Slow and this other commissioner has done, Conway. And they have been charged. And these, these investigations have not started now. You would know that since the PVP came into government, there is an ongoing police, or rather an ongoing investigation and forensic audit into the Guyana police force. Over 20 police officers have already been charged. It's an ongoing exercise. It's an ongoing investigation. And a up Paul Slow and Conway in, as part of the corruption that permeates the guy in the police force. And they are charged and they are before the court. Now, when that happens, the society can no longer repose confidence in that organization if how can PPP supporters, for example, in the Guyana police force ever th think 
or ever feel that they will get a fair chance at promotion at the level of the Police Service Commission when Paul Slow is there and has put the whole commission with the PNC and APNU in a case. How? How can the ordinary man think or feel that this Police Service Commission is impartial, is independent, and is autonomous when it joins Mahipal, Trachman, Harman, Ramjatan, Ford, Gita Chandan, Walter Desir in a case. It cannot happen. No part of the world can this happen. As a result, the Constitution provides for a series of processes to be activated when there is misbehavior by those who hold offices like the Police Service Commission. And that process has been activated. Mr. Paul Slow now, the desperate man that he is, because he might very well lose his job now, which he got under the PPP government at the West Indies Cricket Board, and he may find himself, I don't know, perhaps in jail, he now starts to attack the president, the vice president, and the attorney general. He says that the president attempted to influence him. Well, the president has answered. He said that I attempted to meet with him and the vice president attempted to meet with him, suggesting that we are trying to, or we were trying to meet with him improperly. I am the attorney general. I have actually met with Paul Slow. I met with Paul Slow about four times already for this year. I spoke to Paul Slow from Pakistan. I, I spoke to him for nearly five or ten minutes. I even inquired about the West Indies Cricket Board and the West Indies Cricket Team and how they were performing in Pakistan. I have written letters to Paul Slow. I have given legal advice to Paul Slow because the Attorney General traditionally advises the Police Service Commission. I have appeared in cases defending Paul Slow. So why would I want to meet with Paul Slow and hide it? I meet with the Chancellor of the Judiciary. I meet with the Chief Justice of the country. It is part of my role as Attorney General. I am the conduit between the executive and all the other constitutional agencies. That is my role and function. So I don't have to surreptitiously meet Paul Slow. I don't have to hide to meet Paul Slow. As I have said, I have met him on more than one occasion. And I met the entire commission. I met all five commissioners in my boardroom just a few months ago on more than one occasion. So Paul Slow is hatching up ridiculous lies that do not make sense. I don't know what engagement he had with the um, vice president, but I spoke with the vice president and the vice president can't even recall what Paul Slow is talking about. When did the vice president attempt to speak to Mr. Paul Slow? And for what reason? These guys really think that they are very important. So, Paul Slow, and then you have the sexual assault charge or charges. And the allegation of sexual assault is being made by a an assistant superintendent of police, not a constable, not a corporal, a senior police functionary. And the woman said that the, the, the assault took place three times. Three times. And she... <laughs> so Mr. Paul Slow is in hot water. And you know what they said? what they say about cows or bulls 
who are on their way to the slaughterhouse. Well, Paul Slow is in that category. He is a bull that's going to the slaughterhouse. So he wants to call a set of people's name. Hopefully, something will stick. And then this guy, Joseph Harmon and the APNU, never fail to surprise me. This guy, Harmon, accuses the PPP, the president, and our government of attempting to interfere with constitutional bodies. These people should never ever speak publicly. And they're running to the international community, calling upon the international community to look what is going on in Guyana. These are the people who cuss and abuse the international community in the most vulgar way when the international community told them that they are attempting to thief a government. And now they want to make friends with the international community. So they are trying to, 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 to kind of create this relationship. The international community is shunning them because the international community saw firsthand their attempt to steal the elections and to steal government. So Harman accuses the PPP of authoritarianism. This guy comes from a political party that has been rigging elections from day one. They rigged the 1968 elections. They rigged the 1973 elections. They rigged the 1977 referendum. They rigged the 1980 elections. They rigged the 1985 elections. And until international observers came, they would have rigged all the other elections. And then as soon as they get into government, they try to rig the 2020 elections. And this guy has the audacity and temerity to speak about authoritarianism and about democracy. Harman and Apnu, when we were had a minority government from 2011 to 2015, they cut constitutional agency's budget to a dollar, one dollar. And today, like crocodile, he shed tears. He, Harmon and his party, cut the constitutional agency's budget to one dollar, one dollar, crippling them. And this guy now speaks for the Constitutional Commissions. He wrote a letter to the Police Service Commission directing the Police Service Commission to halt promotions in the police force. And he said in the letter that the president has asked him to do that. These are mad people. And he put that in writing a lawyer, a lawyer of 25 years standing who is head of the presidential secretariat, writes to the police service commission a letter and says, halt promotion. The president is saying, don't, pollute, don't promote police officers. I have never seen this level of stupidity. Of course, I went to court. We were in the opposition and the judge declared the letter to be unconstitutional and constituting unlawful interference with the Police Service Commission. Harmon wrote the letter. I have a court order that says that. And he had to pay costs. And this guy, a lawyer of 25 years standing, is so stupid that he wrote a letter like that. And today, he comes around and wants to criticize the PPP and wants to accuse the PPP of interfering. Simona Brooms, another minister under their government, wrote to the Public Service Commission another letter. And in that letter, requested the chairperson of that commission to halt public servants promotion. Because in that letter, she also says, 
that Granger says that that must be done. These are people who don't understand what is right and what is wrong. That is the level of ignorance that you're dealing with here. Again, I went to court and again I won. And the court declared that letter again to be unconstitutional. And then the very Harmon and President Granger summoned Carville Duncan, the chairman of the Public Service Commission, to the office of the president and demanded that he resigned. Demanded that he resigned. Imagine that. Telling him that if he doesn't resign, there would be blood on the carpet. They did that to a head of a constitutional body. Imagine we calling the chancellor. Imagine if we are to call the chancellor and say resign. Or there will be blood on the carpet. What will happen? That is what they did to Carville Duncan. And when we challenge it in the court, they removed Duncan, suspended him. And when we challenge it in the court, Basil Williams threatened the judge in open court because he would have lost that case as well. He threatened the judge in open court that he will kill him. Remember that story? And these guys, these guys are today now taking principled position. That I'm saying and I keep repeating, the quicker these persons are removed from the political landscape of this country, the quicker there will be progress. I am not saying that all Guyanese should vote for the PVP. I would like to have an opposition, but I would like to have a strong, credible and competent opposition. I can't have this pack of jokers. These guys don't make sense. Nothing that they say makes sense. Nothing that they do makes sense. You, you can't take them seriously. You can't take them seriously. Just look at one of the programs that they have on the Facebook. Round or hit or some. I can't even remember the name of it. And you would have an idea of what I'm speaking about. And, and you know what? They put it in writing too. Because I saw Harmon's statement. He actually wrote that. So, let's move on. So we have massive flooding right across the country and in neighboring countries as well. I'm sure you'll have seen the images of the flooding that is taking place in Suriname. And from all indications, the water will not go down. More rains are predicted to come. So we will continue to have an inundation. But the government of Guyana is in the fields and is working every single day to try to bring, take the water off the land. We have to deal with a city council, the Georgetown Mayan City Council that is completely incompetent. We have to deal with what appears to be willful sabotage of pumps, pump attendants not at work or are sleeping. And just imagine for one moment if we did not have the Hope Canal. They criticized Jack Dale for years about the Hope Canal. But the Hope Canal is the reason why the east coast of the Marara is not underwater. It is the singular reason why the east coast of the Amarara is not underwater. So what we really need, one of the things that we need, is a Hope Canal in every part of Guyana. We need one on East Bank, we need one on the West Coast, we need one in Burbies. So we are battling with this and my, my, my sympathies and my, my, my heart go out, who goes out, to all those who are affected, I have seen families that are, have been underwater for two weeks. 
I know that it cannot be easy. I know the hardship. I know the inconvenience. But we have these natural and sometimes man-made disasters. And we have to learn from these things. We cannot continue with the lifestyle that we are currently engaged in. We cannot continue to dump garbage in the way that we dump garbage. We can't continue to block the canals with plastics and styrofoam boxes. Go to any one of the flooded areas and you will see thousands of styrofoam boxes and plastic bottles floating. That is what is caused contributing to the flooding. So you, 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 have, you, know, you, you have a responsibility. I don't want to say that you have yourself to be blamed, but I will go as far as saying that you have a, a responsibility to behave and conduct yourself in a particular way or else you will be flooded. And I can't do nothing about that and the PVP can't do nothing about that and Irfan Ali can't do nothing about that. That is the reality. You don't get your vaccine, you're likely to die. And that brings me to the vaccine. We still have large segments of the population who are refusing to take the vaccines. All the statistics have shown that persons who have been vaccinated have not contracted the virus. No vaccinated person has died. You still want more? information you still want more encouragement well i don't believe in spoon feeding people i don't believe that i should lecture what is commonsensical you don't want to take the vaccine well then you will live with the consequences my only problem is that you are continuing to expose innocent persons, persons who are taking the precaution and who are vaccinated and who are maintaining their social distances and who are wearing their masks, you are still exposing them because you have failed to take the vaccine. Today, rather yesterday, I met with representatives from the University of Guyana who updated me on the current negotiations ongoing between the University of Guyana, the Council of Legal Education and the University of the West Indies in relation to the UG law program. You know we have had problems over the years and repeatedly we have worked out agreements. Well, the agreements have all now expired and we are now in the process of working out more, uh, another agreement. So I have been invited by UG to join the negotiating team because as Attorney General, I am an, I am an executive member of the Council of Legal Education. And of course, in my last stint as Attorney General, I had secured the last contract, which allowed for 30, 25 Guyanese to gain automatic entry at the University of Guyana. And at that time, at the time when I left, we were about to secure a higher number. But I left at the same time, and of course, my predecessor um, had some serious fights with the people. But I am there now and um, I will be negotiating with the, I will be part of the UG contingent, the Guyana contingent rather, who will be negotiating with UWI and, and the CLE to secure a fair and acceptable agreement so that our students at the University of Guyana can continue to go on to your Wooding Law School and other law schools in the region to complete their certificate of legal education. 
I also want to take this opportunity to speak about some of the issues that I am dealing with at the Ministry of Legal Affairs. A lot is being done, but, you know, we don't get time to showcase it. We don't get time to speak about it. And in our government, I've always felt that uh, PR, um, public relations, is very poor. And we are in government again, and the public relations, in my view, continues to be poor. I don't even promote or no one promotes the work that we are doing in the Ministry of Legal Affairs. But let me say that we have begun a comprehensive statutory overhaul in Guyana. It's a humongous task, but it has begun and we are working assiduously to complete it. It, will, it may not take, it may take far more than five years but we have to begin the process. So in every sector, today I sent something to the housing minister for us to begin to work on a land zoning bill. I sent something to the agriculture minister to let us start to work on a, a food security bill. I sent something to the local government minister for us to start working on a solid waste management bill. We have one in draft, but it is already 10 years old and it has to be revamped and modernized. I spoke with the Minister of Health and we are partnering with WHO and PAHO and we are doing a number of new legislation and amending a number of legislation in the public health sector. In the housing sector as well, a new condominium bill and regulations have been completed in draft and that is out there for consultation. We have a new arbitration bill that is currently being drawn and that will be circulated soon for input from consultations um, from the various stakeholders. And we have various pieces of legislation that have already been completed and waiting to go to cabinet. Then we have a set in the parliament that is in select committee. So the government's uh, legislative agenda is one that is very active and moving at a fast pace. At the same time, I have commenced with the cooperation and assistance of an organization out of Barbados called Impact Justice and Spotlight, a Canadian-funded project, we, have, we are beginning the, a process of revising the laws of Guyana. The revision of the laws of Guyana requires the correction of all mistakes that may be in the law as well as to insert into the law all the amendments which we have made from the last time we revised the law, which was in 2012. So that is another monumental exercise which we are undertaking. And another very important exercise that the AG Chambers is currently engaged is the beginning to work on law reports from 2007 to 2020. Law reports is a very important component of legal research and the legal um, infrastructure of any country. The law reports really is a compilation of the main cases decided in any given jurisdiction. In Guyana, we have law reports dating back from 1800 and something up to 19 up to 2007. The last time I was in office, I completed that 10 years, from 1977 to 2007, and I launched that. I also completed the revision of the laws of Guyana, and I launched that. Now I am revising the laws again, and I am also doing the law reports from 2007 to 2020. It's another very Herculean task, 
a very heavy endeavor and undertaking, but hopefully I'll get help from the bar, I'll get help from the judiciary, and I have a good team in Barbados and in my office who are working assiduously with me to have uh, these projects expedited. The other update I want to give is on the Law Reform Commission. As you know, we have consulted already and the consultations have yielded several names. I have made a list of recommended persons and I have passed it to the President because he has a role to play in appointing two members to the Commission in the exercise of his deliberate judgment. We have also received, we have also made all the preparations for the Secretariat to be established and the staffing for that sec Secretariat are currently being recruited. We have a public um, advertisement process inviting persons to apply to the various for the various posts within the Secretariat and that process we have received all the applic applications and the persons are currently being selected. It's an IDB uh, managed exercise so I am not handpicking people if that's what you think and the commissioners will soon be appointed and this Law Reform Commission will start once it's appointed hopefully will begin to assist in helping me with this humongous exercise of revamping and modernizing all the laws of Guyana. So I thought that it is important that I give you uh, some insight into the work of the Legal Affairs Ministry, not to mention the thousands of cases that we have ongoing in the court system at every level because you know every time the government is sued it is the attorney general who has to take the case and to handle the case and appear so we have a constant flow of litigation this government is sued sometimes once per day so in any week we have five six cases coming in but we have a good complement of staff and i'm building young, bright people. We are offering scholarships um, through the government scholarship program and through other facilities that I am currently negotiating. So hopefully we are building a core of um, good professionals, competent professionals who will be able to represent Guyana's best interests and especially against the influx of foreign investors and investments that are likely to come to our shores. I, my operator is signaling to me that I have come to the end of tonight's program. I think that we have covered great ground. I want to thank you very much for being part of the program. You have been a great, um, it was great, sorry, chatting with you over the past hour or so. And I want you to take care of yourself, avoid the floodwaters, avoid the rain, take the vaccine, wear your masks, practice all the safety protocols around the world promulgated during this pandemic. Stay safe and let's meet again next Tuesday to continue our discourse. Good evening and enjoy the rest of the week. Thank you.